In this video, I want to talk about one approximation strategy for dealing with multidimensional integrals, namely that of discretizing. And discretizing here can either refer to the probability distributions or it can refer to techniques which discretize the integrals themselves. They turn out to be basically the same thing in any case. So one of the difficulties that we spoke about last time with Bayesian inference is evaluating this denominator term. For a continuous parameter vector to evaluate this denominator term, we need to do a multidimensional integral. So we integrate many, many times according to the number of parameter dimensions that we have our numerator of basis rule. So that's p of x given theta times p of theta. And we're integrating here with respect to parameter theta1, theta2, etc., all the way up to the last parameter we have in our model, theta k. And we said that exactly working out this multidimensional integral is impossible. There are no analytic results in general for doing such an integration, and so we need to use approximate methods to do so. One of the simplest techniques to work out multidimensional integrals, or to approximate them rather, is that of discretizing. So we imagine that we've got a single continuous parameter, theta, and we can draw what the product of the likelihood and the prior would look like. Let's imagine it looks something like this. So this blue curve here represents p of x given theta times p of theta. In integrating, what we'd be doing is working out the area underneath this curve. We're just imagining that we've got a univariate parameter for the time being. But instead, what we could do, alternatively, is we could discretize theta so that we say it only exists at discrete values along this dimension. And then what we could do is we could evaluate the likelihood times the prior in each of these discrete grid points. And if we do so, we end up with a discrete distribution, which looks something like the sort of orange thing that I'm drawing here, the orange graph. How then could we work out the denominator term for our orange graph? Well, that's quite simple. Because it's a discrete case now, then what we need to do is we need to sum p of x given, I'm just going to call it theta i, times p of theta i, and we're summing from i equals 1 to n, where n is the number of grid points that we have in our parameter. So this is an approximation to our denominator term, where we've approximated the denominator term by saying that theta only exists at a discrete number of points. And then what we do is we say, well, let's approximate the entire posterior p of theta i given x as being equal to p of x given theta i times p of theta i, all divided through by this sum, which is the sum from i equals 1 to n, of p of x given theta i times p of theta i. And remember that this is a sort of approximation. We've turned something which is continuous into something that is discrete in nature. And this is the process of discretizing our posterior. So in one dimension, we can work out these quantities easy enough. And what does that mean? Well, it means that we could also work out summaries of that distribution. So let's imagine that we want to work out the expected value of theta given x. We could do so. We could do so by simply taking our approximate posterior and then summing theta i times p of theta i given x, and we're summing over all our grid points. And that would give us an approximate estimate of the expected value of theta. And of course, the quality of the approximation gets better the more points that we use in our discretization. So if we use twice as many points, then we get an approximate posterior, which will look that much closer to the continuous case, the exact result. So discretizing seems to work reasonably well in one dimension. How does it fare in more dimensions? I now want to show you a series of plots in one dimensions, two dimensions, and three dimensions to explain to you the difficulty of using discretization to understand a function or a probability distribution as we move to higher dimensional cases. So in one dimension, let's imagine that we've got some function that we've discretized, so it looks something like this. 
that seems entirely feasible to calculate all of these different points along here using a computer. A computer can zip through each of these pretty quickly. What about when we move to two dimensions? We're now imagining that we've got a function which looks pretty similar to our univariate case, but now we've got two dimensions. It's again, it's a sort of trigonometric function. We can see here that the number of points that we'd need to evaluate is essentially the square of the number of points that we would need to evaluate in the first case. That's because for each different value of each of the variables, I have the equivalent number of points that I need to evaluate in the other dimension. And so if I have 10 grid values in one dimension that I want to evaluate and I have 10 in the other one, then I'm gonna need 100 points overall to be able to represent that function. So you can see here in the 2D case that we're having to work out many more different calculations than we did do in the 1D case. What about in the 3D case? Well, now I can't simply represent this in 2D. And so essentially what we have is that for each value of Z, our third unobserved variable, we have a different surface. And that surface has the same number of points that I need to evaluate as the 2D case. So as I step through these different surfaces, each of these different surfaces requires the sum, same number of points to be evaluated as the 2D case. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that if I have 10 points, grid points in each of the dimensions, then I need to work out a thousand points to be able to approximate the integrals that we need to do in Bayesian statistics. So just to summarize that, if we have one parameter and we discretize that so that it exists at 10 grid points, we need to do 10 calculations, so that's in the 1D case. If we have a 2D parameter, then if we use 10 grid points in each of the dimensions, then we need to work out 10 squared calculations to be able to approximate our integral. In the 3D case, we've seen that we would need 10 to the 3 calculations to be undertaken. And so we can think about, well, that might be practical to do in the 3D case, but what about in the 20D case? So we're still not necessarily talking about a very complicated statistical model. In that case, we would need to work out 10 to the 20 calculations. And 10 to the 20 is a number that is just too big for a computer to go through. It just can't work out each of the individual terms starting at 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10 to the 20. There are just too many calculations to undertake. And that problem is just compounded. If I go to a thousand dimensional, I have to work out a number that's mind-bogglingly big. It's just entirely impractical to do. So what do we see here? We see that with the dimensionality of the problem, the computational load scales exponentially in the number of dimensions. And this is an example of what is known as the curse of dimensionality. And it crops up in lots of different areas. So this is a problem with discretizing our density and then discretizing Bayes' rule, so we end up with a discrete version of Bayes' rule. Another question you might have is, well, can't we use one of these numerical integration techniques, such as Gaussian quadrature, to approximate our integral? So this is slightly different. The difference is quite subtle. Before, we were actually just discretizing Bayes' rule so that we ended up with a probability mass distribution at the end. Now we're saying, can we approximate our integrals? And the main deterministic ways that you approximate integrals is via discretizing the integral in some form. But the idea here would be that we are still keeping our parameters as continuous, but we're discretizing the integral to allow us to approximate it. So can we use this integral discretization method in Bayesian applications? Well, the answer is no. Well, we can in, in relatively few numbers of dimensions. So perhaps up to three, four or five dimensional parameter spaces. But in much bigger parameter cases, they run into exactly the same difficulty that we found from discretizing Bayes' rule itself. Namely, that we have to work out the, the prior times the likelihood at an exponentially increasing number of values of theta. So simply, discretizing, whether it takes the form of discretizing Bayes' rule itself and making the parameter vector itself discrete, or 
the deterministic numerical integration routines, which essentially work out these integrals by discretizing, are doomed to failure. So we've seen that discretizing works in cases where we have relatively small parameter spaces. In other words, we only have a few different parameters in our model. But as soon as we get up to realistic numbers of parameters for reasonably complex problems, we see that discretizing, whether it takes the form of discretizing Bayes' rule or discretizing the integrals themselves, falls down. We are required to work out an exponentially increasing number of calculations. And so discretizing isn't going to be a practical method to use.